Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Riverbed Disrupt. Brought to you by Riverbed. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to the Big Apple, everybody. This is Riverbed Disrupt. We've got a special guest, Steve DePlessis is with us. The man behind many men and women at Enterprise Strategy Group, founder, <laughs> head, chief, chief analyst, senior analyst. Steve, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. How are so, you doing, fellas? It was good. We were photo bombing, video bombing us today, and here you are. That was not intentional. I didn't know the exact configuration <laughs> of the camera. We're almost or... always live. So, it's all right, uh, and that ended up, now you're in front of the camera. That's all right, this is not a bomb. <laughs> so what's doing these days? What's, what's happening? Um, that's a ridiculous question. What's exciting Dave. you? Ah, that's somewhat less ridiculous and <laughs> still very open to interpretation. I give me a path to head down, and we can talk about. All right, well, let's it. start with uh, with Dell EMC. You wrote ah. a great blog on that. You know the history. It was good. Really enjoyed that. It, 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 EMC's success is because you left, right? So I'm not exactly sure. It's a 50-50 between Mike Rucker's coming in and making everything that we sold actually work because not much of it worked. I got to say, a lot of people are really positive. People who know both Dell and EMC are actually really sure. positive about the, the marriage here. Are we nuts? Uh, I don't think so. I, I, I think from day one I saw I'll give you a quick anecdote. Hopefully quick. Tell me to shut up if not. Here's the parallel. In 2000, Joe Tucci comes in, and it, it, that particular it, to run EMC. And at that particular time, EMC was really good about bringing in some outsider and spitting them out. The DNA and the antibodies were just awful in that culture to, in that for an outsider to come in and be able to survive in there. And they went through a bunch of senior managers, senior executives, vice presidents, yada, 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 that nobody lasted. And Tucci came in, and I'd, I'd never met the man before, and he had no business to have any idea who I was, for example. And for whatever reason, I was able to get an audience with him very early on, and I sat down with him, and the first question I asked him, only question I asked him, and I wasn't looking nice like you, I was disrespectful, and he could conceive of me as disrespectful, and I said, what are you going to do about Moshe? Because at the time, as many of us that are old enough to know, Moshe was king of the, of the hill over there. He, he owned Symmetrics and, and you, he was untouchable. Harry Dixon and Moshe were the two untouchable human beings within that EMC culture. And Joe looked me right in the eye and didn't skip a beat at all and said, he's either going to play nice in the sandbox or he's gone. And it wasn't six weeks later that ostensibly he was gone. And I couldn't believe it. And so I knew right then and there, I knew without knowing the man that this guy was a little bit different. And uh, everybody within the EMC antibody sort of climate said, nope, he's not going to last six months, he's not going to last. And, but I knew, you know, you look somebody in the eye and you see that. And so I saw a lot of the similarities in this deal. So you guys have been around forever. I've been around forever. You know Michael. M Michael's a straight shooting guy. Michael doesn't have a an ego or a vanity pretense or he doesn't do things for the wrong reasons. He said something very very interesting to me about a year before the EMC deal, which was, or a couple of years before, when he was talking about, at, I think it was three par at the time, when he was in the bidding war with Dave Donatelli at HP o over three par. And I don't remember the exact context of the comment, but he talked about Dell spending money and he said, you know, I treat it like it's my own money. B because it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> because it is. Whereas uh, he, what he was alluding to is others are spending stockholders' money and it's not really that. And, but, so that was just a, sort of an interesting look into, into, uh, into the guy there. So when this deal happened, these are not two strangers. Right, they've been together, they've been married and divorced, if you will, and have a, had a relationship for a long time. They know each other. And so when it sort of happened, you're like, oh boy. You know, and you, on paper you can see the synergies, and a lot of people I think, I'm, I'm certainly not unique, everybody saw the synergies, there's not a lot of overlap. Really what you worry about in a deal like that is cultural. Are, are, the, are the chiefs, are the generals going to be able to get along or are they going to beat the hell out of each other and backstab and, and do what happens in every one of these deals it seems like? And they didn't, right? They, so, they really didn't. Interesting that 
you know, now EMC is a private company, kind of a bummer for those who live in Massachusetts, kind of, but kind of a, there's a good Why thing Why is that a bummer? Well. Why is that a bummer? Well, because EMC, the brand EMC is going to be gone, right? Just like, it's oh, going to okay. go, go Not the that they're private, just Digital yeah, yeah. and Prime and Wang and Oh, no, else. no, let's hope that doesn't yeah. happen. Well, we'll see. We'll see, it's Dell Technologies. It's, yeah, there's it's already Dell Dell's EMC logos up on the building. So from that standpoint, it's sad. Correct. Okay, and you're Correct. sad about it too. It's, it's hard not to sure. be after, you know. of course. This, this, okay, but. This backdrop of companies going private, obviously Riverbed, now Click, uh, BMC, many, many, many and others. Rackspace. This new private equity game plan. Veritas. Right, is back really in, right? In, it used to be private equity, put in some financial guy, suck all the money out, and sure. leave the carcass for yep. whatever's yep. left. And now they're saying, why should the VCs have all the fun? I mean, Riverbed got taken out for what, 3.6 billion? Mm -hmm. They're going to, at some point, do an IPO, they're going to be 10 billion plus. A year from now. Right, I mean, eight, 10? Billion, maybe, yeah, I don't probably. know, seven, eight. Yeah. I mean, that's a nice return. That's uh, a nice Michael, return. Michael Dell returns. <laughs> so I think that um, you bring up a, a very a fascinating point that I think is going to happen more often than less. And the, the at the, I'm not that smart, but fundamentally, <laughs> having that microscope and that spotlight on you in 90 day increments, dealing with no disrespect, 26 year old MBAs that have never had a real job, that their only interest is squeezing that penny per share, uh, regardless of what the human impact or what the uh, long term impact to a company is, is the wrong way to do business. It's, a, it's our way, it's our system, but it's the wrong fundamental way to do business. You, you, your dad's probably told you just like I did, no, 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 you, you, you spend less than you make. It's, right, we're not the government, we can't print our own money. You spend less than you make and, and you, you honor your debts and all these other things. I think the privatization aspect in all of this stuff is just going to keep going because these companies are good companies. And they, you take the handcuffs on them, they don't care what Wall Street thinks for a certain period of time, years, certain period of time, and when they're ready to come back, exactly right. They go from $3 billion to $10 billion because they were able to do the right things, not because they only cared about squeezing the coffee budget to make another uh, you know, 0.10 cents a share. Yeah. Steve, so, you know, market shares and competition in enterprise tech, you know, seem for a long time, you know, nothing changed. Storage industry was very entrenched. You know, we've seen market shares shifting a lot. Sure. You know, bring it back to, you know, we're at a show called Disrupt here. You know, there's been a leader in the networking world for most of my career years, yeah. here. Um, why are, you know, enterprises, you know, open to, you know, more change? They're doing cloud. They're, you know, looking at some of the things like Riverbed's talking about. It's a great question. So, I, I, first I would say they're not. Okay. They're not open to it. Nobody, and there are two fundamental reasons. One is, uh, I hate to say it, but human beings are lazy. I'm one of them. The devil I know is easier than the devil I don't. Yeah, most people don't like change. No, do not like change whatsoever. So the, re the only reason that anybody changes any of this stuff is because one, they have to. It just doesn't work anymore. Nobody buys something that's better because it's better. They buy it because they have to buy it. Yeah, why'd you buy that Tesla? Yeah, what? well, that's a um, terrible example. <laughs> I'm an idiot. And, and I just bought it because it was way better. All right, uh, sorry. <laughs> now, but we're at, we are at some inflection points right now, so it doesn't matter why the change occurred, right? So I could still, I, I think a, maybe a different answer is, I could buy a horse, right? It's still a valid mode of transportation. It just makes me a complete ass if, if I do, right? <laughs> but it's technically a valid mode of transportation. So we, I could still go on do that path. I, people get into a habit of, uh, over a course of years and sometimes decades, this is just the way we did it. This is the way we do it. It's the way I was trained, this is the way I will train the next guy. I'm going to walk in in the morning and smash myself on the ha with a hammer in the head every day. Why? I don't know, it doesn't feel good. Why do you keep doing it? Because that's the way we do it, type of stuff. So it, change tends to be, some. you need some macro external function to force a change. VMware had ESX for 10 years before they became VMware as we know them. It, it, 10 years, why did that happen? Because un, it was a nice to have, it was the smarter thing to do, it only happened when the data center ran out of power and cooling. When I couldn't physically fit any more stuff in there and I still had to do a job, that's when people went, well, those guys in the corner are running this cool stuff that emulates pretty much any environment you want to. And you do it and people went, oh, oh, that's interesting. And now you're an idiot if you don't run VMware just as an example. 
right? And so I think that it's the same sort of thing. We get hub and spoke, spine and leaf, yada, 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 whatever the networking uh, terminology is that we had to do, that had a place in, in, in time. But you would never probably architect something like that today if you started from a clean piece of paper. And I'm not picking on just Cisco. I'd take the, as long as you're going to keep giving me a buck, I'm going to take your buck. Right, it's, it's they they because they do answer to shareholders, so they they're sort of at a catch. -run. They they could, they could, and they will eventually react to the market that says, stop doing it that way because it's the wrong way to do how it. About HP, but, HPE. Ooh, how about HP? Going the opposite direction of, of Dell. Super well, interesting. Will they? Will 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 Dell's ability to sell through EMC change the dynamic in the server market? Will they surpass HPE? I, so my personal bet, if I had to bet right now, I would say yes, the answer is yes. And here's the reason why. You, got, you had three sort of uh, mega companies, right? In, in, well really two, HP and IBM. And then you had Dell as the, it sounds stupid to say, but of the wannabe to those guys. And Dell's grown up and, and now they're on equal playing fields. But, so H, IBM took one path. IBM said, I'm kind of going to get out of the infrastructure business and I'm going to get into the third platform. I'm all in the higher value, or what I presume to be eventually higher value plays there. But there's no value in commodity hardware, et cetera, et cetera. Analytics, and, baby, yeah. Yeah, you got it. Whatever, Cognitive. whatever it is. <laughs> and okay, that's, that's Great. good for them. Good and bet. they made big a bet. lot of big yeah. bets, right? HP went exactly the other way. Let's just, you know, we, we might have paid 10 billion for autonomy, but we're going to sell our 30 billion dollars in, in software assets for less money because it is distractive. And they, so they split the two companies into printers, essentially. Cut your losses and go. Yeah, yeah. and don't get me wrong, those are, Burger King makes money. Right, Burger King makes money. They follow McDonald's around, and, I'm, and this is not a good analogy, but it's the only one I can kind of think of on the, top of my head, being number two and profitable is not a bad business. And so as such, they don't have to support, HP doesn't have to support a full stack of all of this other stuff that's really complicated and hard and really big company things, so they're divesting themselves of it. So Meg's essentially being her own PE firm. She's stripping it before somebody else strips it and taking what she can get in the coffers and and it's essence, tax efficient. Yeah, starting it again. What about Riverbed? Give, you a give us your bumper sticker and then we get a wrap. All yeah, right, so they, I, I'm, uh, I'm probably the wrong person to ask and for the following reasons. Number one, A, I'm not deep enough. Um, but number two is I've loved these guys since literally their inception. And <clears throat> I will tell a quick story in that sense. I, I was meeting their primary venture capitalist at the time, a guy named Chris Sheppy from Lightspeed, and I went to that, that uh, Greek place in Palo Alto that I can never remember the name of. And I was meeting him and he, uh, he called me on the way over and he said, hey, I, I'm uh, running a little late with a guy, do you mind if somebody joins us? I said, no, and it was Jerry. And in, so I walk in and I'm this kid and there's Jerry in his jeans and doesn't care about anything type of thing. And I said, oh, great, so what do you do? He said, oh, well, and Chris said, well, I, we just funded, seed funded him. I said, oh, that's terrific, what's, what's the company doing? And I swear to God, he went, not exactly sure yet. <laughs> Thinking about a networking thing, you know, some paraphrasing, that, like, they, they gave him money and, and he didn't know what they were going to do. And I was like, oh my God, what a great bet. <laughs> that worked out that's really, your people. really, really well. <laughs> so I love Riverbed, I've loved him ever since. I love Jerry as not only a character and a, and a human being, but it's a great company that has done you know, again, taking on Goliath. Really hard to take on Goliath, and Cisco is about as Goliath as they come, and these guys have just kicked butt. Well, you've, you've taken on Goliath in a pretty entrenched business, so I said last question. Last question, what's new with ESG? You guys are rocking, you got a bunch of people working for you, and just keep growing, and love to see it. New areas, hit the security, you're into virtually you know, every part of, of IT. Your customers love you. What's, what's new with you guys? Um, my current personal passion and where we're driving more, I think interesting stuff <clears throat> than normal is in security because it is the wild, wild west. So I'm a storage guy, I'm boring box kind of guy. I understood that stuff 25 <laughs> years ago. Security is fascinating to me because it is the storage business kind of 25 years ago, only an order of magnitude if not bigger. 
So there are 1,500 companies, not 150 trying to want to be. And, and there's zero clear uh, winners in any of these senses. They, uh, Riverbed brought up Palo Alto today, great company. But there are hundreds of different vectors that, that are all sort of attempting in one way or another to do the same thing, but it, it's, a, it's a horse race where all the horses are running in different directions. It looks like a Monty Python <laughs> kind of skit, ready, go, boom everywhere. And so I, I'm, I personally find that intriguing and fascinating also because the bigger they are, the harder they fall. So we'll go from a, a 1,500 to 150, and then we'll go from almost a trillion invested to, oh boy, a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money, but from that, certainly some players are going to rise tremendously. And the you know, other thing I'd really find interesting is uh, this is we're no longer in the era of the boring box. We really aren't. And, uh, and that's good for everybody in IT, except people that really love the boring box. And, and so there's always hard, uh, the school of hard knocks, right? People are going to lose jobs, and, and it's unfortunate in that respect, and they'll come clinging to that Titanic. But at the end of the day, what's on the other side is crazy stuff. You know, it's crazy. The, the, the iPhone, we forget, is it, it's seven years old or something. It's eight years old. We, we act like it's a, you know, we've had it forever. But no, 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 I had a bag phone when I was with EMC. And I thought it was really cool at $1,000 a minute to be calling my friend <laughs> who had a bag phone because you couldn't call anybody else because no one else had a bag phone. You know? <laughs> that wasn't that long ago. So anyway, them. All right, well, it's going to be interesting to see picking winners uh, in the security space. But uh, so congratulations on all your success. Oh, thanks. Thank you very much for coming on theCUBE. It was great Anytime, guys. Thank you so much. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap Riverbed Disrupt right after this.